Hello, hello. We are a select crowd this evening. And what I'm going to do is because I, I know that quite a few of you can't make it this evening. I appreciate your messages saying you really want to be here, but you can't. So thank you for your messages. Um, and I'm going to start now. And if people join us later on, that's fantastic. Um, I'm very grateful for those of you who are either here with me live or if you're watching on catch up, you are. I'm, I'm very grateful because our time is our most valuable resource, isn't it? And I'm very grateful that you've given up your time to either watch me live or to watch on catch up. And I also want to honor this commitment that you've made to yourself because. Sometimes whatever I've said in my little trailers to advertise my free challenge, something has obviously sparked your interest. Um, and I don't take this commitment lightly. I suspect a lot of you have been in clinic today and you've been seeing a lot of patients. So I appreciate your time here this evening. Um, but just before we start, I just want to take a minute because I want you, I want all of us to just stop for a minute and congratulate ourselves and give ourselves a bit of a pat on the back because often as osteopaths we don't do that do we we don't a lot of us don't even have a principal we don't have a boss we don't have anyone who's going you've done a fantastic job today you're doing super well you're doing really well we often don't have that so sometimes we have to be our own cheerleaders and just take a minute just to go oh it's a really good job today it doesn't matter how many patients you've seen it doesn't matter how many that got better or didn't or even if you haven't been in clinic today just honor the fact that as osteopaths, we go into practice every day to serve, to care for our patients, to help them get better. And so just take that second, just to, just to kind of congratulate yourself and appreciate where you are and the fact that as an osteopath, we don't always do that. So let's be our own, let's be our own cheerleaders this evening. And um, we will, Pat our own selves on the back so that we know that we're doing a super job. So I'm going to make sure that this evening's meeting is full of value for you. Um, I'm going to try and keep it to half an hour because I realise this is the end of the day for most of us. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is just kind of going to scratch the surface of, of how I feel that we'll be able to um, how I'll be able to help you and how I'll be able to work with you. Bear with me today, because today might not be quite what you're expecting it's going to be. Um, and there is a reason why I've deliberately set these three days out as I have set them out. So, so just bear with me. You might think some of it is a bit like, what on earth has that got to do with osteopathy? But I promise you, over my nearly quarter of a century in practice, I have understood, as I'm sure you do, wherever you are in your practice, that... There is more to osteopathy than just the hands-on stuff. And we need to remember that. And we also need to remember that a lot of what goes on in here has a really huge impact on us as osteopaths and how successful we are. So I'm going to share my screen with you so I can do my little presentation that I've done. Go. Okay. Okay need okay. right hopefully you can now see that yes you can marvelous so my day one of the challenge is really to take you through some really useful mindset techniques. Because it's all based on research, but really helping you to know where you are and where you can, how you can move from where you are to, to maybe where you want to be. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Liz Kirby. I know I've spoken to some of you before. Um, I am a registered osteopath. I have been working for coming up to 24 years. Um, I live in a beautiful part of England called Cheshire with my two teenagers who have just become 18 and my two crazy dogs who I really hope you won't hear barking in the background. And um, what I, the reason why I've done this challenge is because I am acutely aware 
that within our profession, there are a lot of people who are struggling. There are a lot of people who are feeling very unsupported. And I don't like that feeling where people aren't feeling supported and aren't feeling looked after. Um, and so I've decided to put this three big challenge together just to give you an insight into how you may be able to work with me, take yourself forward, what I can do to help you in your struggles. So what I'm gonna cover, as I said earlier, I'm gonna try and keep this to half an hour. I apologize if I go over a little bit, I'd get a little bit enthusiastic. And I have got a whole heap of notes down here. So if I keep looking down, it's because I'm checking to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. So we're gonna talk about the triad of emotions. We're gonna talk about the six human needs. We're gonna talk about the importance of why, and then finish off with a brilliant seven levels deep exercise, which when I did it for the first time, kind of blew my mind slightly. And then as I put the bottom, questions, questions, questions. You have in front of you, someone who's been doing this job for nearly 25 years, talk, ask me questions, get, get stuff out of my head that I can help you. If they're right, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here to, to really help and serve you today. Okay, so what do you know about your emotions? As the great Tony Robbins says, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan, the quality of our life is the quality of our emotions. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is whatever we think about, whatever we focus on, however we speak to ourselves, that is the direction with which our emotions go. So what controls and determines the quality of our life is the meaning and the emotions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And the things that we want in life, we want because of the feelings that they give us. So if you say to yourself, oh, I really want that new phone, or I really want that latest phone, or I really want that Porsche, or I really want that really big house, it's the feelings that you want around having that thing rather than the thing itself that's the emotion that we're after. Now, we can get those feelings of being happy, of being delighted that we have something at any time. We don't have to have something in order to have those emotions. But very often we hear ourselves saying, oh, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when I've got lots of money in the bank. I'll be happy when I've achieved this number of patients per week, or I'll be confident when, that's another one. I'll be, I'll be confident when I've been on another course, or I'll be confident when I have a regular stream of new patients coming in. So we can generate those feelings of confidence and we have to generate those feelings of confidence and happiness. And one of the ways that we do it is to think about what state we live in all the time. So that's what I mean by the triad of our state. There are three things that are involved in our state, which is kind of state is the emotional state that we're in. It's our physiology, our focus and our language. Now, physiology, I know we all know what physiology means in our world. So yes, it's to do with the body and it's to do with how you move your body, how you hold yourself, what expression you have in your face. It's all to do with your, the emotion that you're creating in yourself. How is, that, how is that demonstrated in your body? So if I was to ask you to show me a happy person, a happy physiology, would you know exactly what to do, wouldn't you? You'd be upright, your shoulders would be back, chin would be up, smile on your face. And the opposite, if you are a low energy person or someone who's depressed, you know, you would be shoulders slumped, head down, not looking very happy. So if you want to change your state, your emotional state, the first thing that you need to do is to change your physiology. So if someone is feeling a bit down or depressed, if they can lift themselves up and if they can change their state, change their physiology rather, that will help them to change their state. Now, the second thing that we need to think about is focus and beliefs. So, and we're gonna have another Tony Robbins quote. Don't worry, it's not all full of Tony Robbins quotes. Where focus goes, energy flows. Where energy flows, focus goes. If you are always, we're well not always, we can't always be happy. If we try and live in a happy state, majority of the time, our life is gonna be happy. If we are always focusing on the negatives, our life is going to go down that negative path. Now, this is no, it's a universal law, quantum physics and all of that, which I won't bore you with this evening. 
But if we, and we kind of know this, don't we, from the patients that we've come across and maybe even ourselves, if we're always looking at the negative, if we're always looking at the lack rather than, the, than abundance, we're going to head down that path. So what you might be feeling sometimes is I haven't got enough patience. I, I just don't feel like I've got enough patience and I haven't got enough patience. So I'm not very happy because I haven't got enough patience. If you turn that round and you say to yourself, um, I'm working on getting more patients. I might not quite have the number that I need at the moment, but I'm going to get there eventually and I'm going to do it by taking some action. That's a very different mindset, isn't it? That's a very different focus and belief pattern and going, I'm, I'm really not doing very well. I haven't got enough patients. I'm never going to be a good osteopath. And focus and beliefs are very, are very closely tied together. So what you believe about something will also direct your your focus and your energy so if you believe that you're not a very good osteopath you're going to carry on in the state of not being a very good osteopath and our beliefs are often things that have come from other people um, often they come from when we are children we are told things about ourselves you might have been told or you're you're not very you're not very confident or you need to be more confident or you're very shy you're not very outgoing or you're too loud these often are things that we have, we form these beliefs about ourselves and they're not always true and they can be, they can really hold us back later on in life. So whatever you focus on, that's where your energy goes. And um, when I work with my clients, if I can, if I notice that we're heading down or they're heading down that negative path of lack of abundance and just basically lack, then we try and, and refocus so that we're not concentrating so much on the lack. We need to think about how we can turn that around to a more abundant mindset. And then the last one is language. Now, this is, this is a really important one because as you are no doubt aware, our subconscious mind runs most of what we do on a daily basis. It's not our conscious mind that controls what we do. It's mostly our subconscious mind. And so we need to watch our language because if we are constantly telling ourselves, I'm no good at this, I can't do this, um, I'm shy, I'm a rubbish osteopath, we're always going to be, start to believe that because that's what our subconscious mind hears all the time. So we need to be very careful about the language that we use and the, the way that we are talking to ourselves. So you might say to yourself, I'm not really doing very well in this osteopathy thing because I haven't, I haven't really got enough patience or I'm not really very confident. Again, with my, the people that I work with, I'm, I try and turn that around and say, I might not be as confident as I need to at the moment, but there are things that I can do. There are ways I can build my confidence. There are ways that I can build my skills up so that I will become more confident. Do you see where I'm going with that? If we're always, always talking about things in the negative, in the lack, that's the direction that we're going to go down. Now, stay with me because we're going to come back to this. There is, there is a reason why, as I said, there's a reason why I've directed this in a particular way. So when we're talking about humans and our beliefs, there are, oh, before we move on, let me just bring in this little quote for you. So there's a powerful driving force inside every human being that once unleashed can make any vision, dream, or desire a reality. And I've put that in there because what I'm hoping that this very quick little chat today is going to start to help you with is thinking about your life as an osteopath a little bit more intentionally. So having a vision, having a dream, having a desire, and then we can work, work, work with how we're going to achieve that desire. So just remember that and just, just bear that in mind when we go on to the next section. So the next, the next part of human behaviour, which I think is absolutely essential for us to understand. And when I was first taught this, it was, it was quite an aha moment for me, actually. Because I've done a lot of work on, in, on myself, but also in personal development. And these six human needs, to me, are really fundamental for us, under, us understanding why we behave the way that we do, and then also why other people behave the way that we do. So there are six human needs. 
four primary ones or primal needs and two spiritual needs. And the first two are certainty and uncertainty. Now, they're fairly, fairly straightforward, aren't they? Certainty. We all want certainty in our life, don't we? We all want some form of stability. We want to have a roof over our head, food in the fridge, money in the bank. So for a lot of people, certainty is quite high on their list of values. And when we talk about human needs, everybody, these six human needs, everybody values them differently and puts a different one top and a different one second. Um, and there's a really great quiz that I'm going to put the link into the chat that you can take to work out what is your what are your sort of top two human needs. And it's really interesting and it it, it really explains our behaviour and why we do the things that we do and why we behave the way that we behave when you know what your driving force is, because this is what these human needs are, they they your driving force. So certainty, everyone has everyone needs a certain amount of certainty. If that's your primary goal, that's or your primary need, that's great. But sometimes if you are have that as your primary need, you're you can get a bit stuck in your ways. You don't like to take risks and you can be quite hesitant and maybe that holds you back. The opposite of that is obviously uncertainty. And we all need some form of uncertainty in life. We need to change our behavior. We need to change what we eat. We need to change where we go. We need to um, maybe change the people that we surround ourselves with. We don't always want to be doing the same sort of things. But the danger of that's your top driving force is that you are a massive risk taker, and that maybe you're not very focused and that maybe you have a difficulty in planning things. So that's uncertainty. Second, the next thing, significance. So everybody needs to feel important and special. And if this is your top human need, if you have a boss who doesn't really seem to value you and doesn't really seem to appreciate what you do, you're not going to feel that you matter to that person. So that relationship isn't going to be an easy relationship. If you, if you have an overdeveloped need for significance, then sometimes you are a total perfectionist. You, you're over competitive and that's taking it to the extreme. Connection and love is the next one. So we all need to feel connected either to something or someone. Um, it can take the form of, of, a, of love, like a loving relationship with a, a partner, with a family member, with a pet, or it can, it can be in terms of social groups. So going to the gym or being a member of a particular sports group. Now, connection is something that I think as osteopaths is probably top there on, on one of our needs. Um, the trouble with it, if that is one of your primary driving forces is it's really difficult to say no. And I wonder how many of us can kind of associate with that. You know, we're not always very good at saying no. So that's the negative side of having connection. It's one of your, your main driving forces. And the two spiritual needs, growth. If we're not growing, we're dying. Now, I would like to hazard a guess that you are watching me live or you're listening to this on Catch Up. You have growth as one of your important human needs. And, you know, I said just a few minutes ago that when I discovered this, it was a bit of an aha moment for me. Because, and I don't know whether any of you can, um, can associate with this or can see this in yourselves. I'm the one of my group of friends who is always going on the course. I'm always learning. I'm always wanting to develop something or grow in some way or have a new skill set. And it kind of becomes a bit of a joke with my non-osteo friends. You know, I'll we'll be trying to organize something and I'm oh, really sorry, I can't do that. I'm, I'm on a Zoom call or I'm on a course the weekend. It's like, oh, Liz is doing another course. And actually I used to kind of, almost not tell people that I was doing more growing, I was doing more learning because it was kind of getting a little bit embarrassing. Now I embrace that because that is one of my important driving forces. I need to feel that I'm growing and that I'm learning and that I'm developing myself. So I try not to get too embarrassed about it anymore. They still tease me about it, but you know what? I'm the one who's growing and learning new skills, so I'm fine with that. The only issue, if that is your you know, a really big driver for you is sometimes you can be very independent and sometimes you don't always make those connections with people because you're too busy learning and growing. So I have to, I have to manage my growth mindset so that I am keeping in touch with my friends and I am making sure that I'm having a social life. I'm not just doing another Zoom call. 
And then the final one is contribution. Again, I think this is probably one that when you take the test, you'll you'll find this may be quite high on your driving force. Um, and that's that we all have a we all have a need to serve to a greater or lesser extent. I think in the osteopathy world we have quite a high need to serve. We need to kind of go beyond ourselves. That's why so many people volunteer. Again, the downside to that is that you can burn yourself out. A bit like the connection, the hard to say no. If, you, if you've got connection and contribution, you're gonna burn yourself out and you're not gonna be able to say no. So those are the, the, what, the ways in which we prioritize our needs. And we all prioritize them differently. And our decisions are based on which of these needs we put first. These are often very deep seated and we don't even realize half the time that they're there. Um, and when I was learning about this, it reminded me of one of my lovely receptionists. She'd been with me for about three or four years. And one day she came in and she said, um, I'm, I'm gonna resign, I'm gonna hand in my notice. What, what have I done wrong? Why do you want to go? I, I thought you were happy. And she's like, no, I've loved being here, but um, I've been doing a, and I knew she had, she'd been doing a counselling course. I wanted to go on to do more counselling work. And she was very keen on working with people who were overcoming drug and alcohol addiction. And that's now what she does. And at the time, I just couldn't understand this. I was just like, I know that she wants to do this, but she only works with me part time. Can she not do something part time and still work with me? What I didn't realize was that uncertainty was really important to her, as well as growth. So she, when I look back over her CV, she'd stayed sort of three or four years in one place and then she'd moved on. And whereas I saw that as I must have done something wrong, what I wasn't understanding was that was her driving force. Her driving force was she had certainty for a while, then she needed to have uncertainty. And so I wouldn't say it necessarily made me feel better because I was very sorry that she left. She was a brilliant section, she was brilliant with patients, but she needed to do that. She needed to move on and she needed to find her uncertainty somewhere else. So if you come across people, either patients or people that you work with or family members or friends, maybe just have a rethink about what what might be their driving force? Because it might be that their driving force is uncertainty and that's why they behave where they are, where they are. Or it might be certainty and that's why you cannot get them to shift because they've got to be certain in their lives. So we all rank these differently um, and the way that we rank them explains why we behave the way that we do. The first four shape our personality and the last two shape our spiritual needs. So again, you might be thinking, what the hell has this got to do with osteopathy? Do bear with me because I'm trying to make you a little bit more, give you a little bit more understanding of maybe why you're behaving the way that you are, why you're doing the things that you do. You fantastic. If they're not, how can we change those driving forces in you so that they are serving you better? And so this leads me on to. My mission. Now, you'll hopefully you'll have seen this and you'll have heard me say this many, many, many times because my mission is to help you go from just surviving to totally thriving as a competent, confident practitioner, which has, and you're free from the anchors that's stopping you from achieving what you desire. And some of those might be because those human needs, those important driving forces, are the ones that are holding you back. Now then, going to shift focus a little bit here. Have you heard of Simon Sinek? I'm sure if you're growers and you have a growth mindset like I do, you will have come across Simon Sinek. If you haven't, I would highly recommend you check out his TED talk. I think it's one of the most viewed TED talks. Um, it's called The Golden Circle. And um, it, it, he came up with a theory of if you start with why. So not how you do something or when you do something, it's why you do something. And this is one of his quotes. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. So people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. 
And when you watch the Golden Circle video, uh, TED Talk rather, you'll see what he means by that. And he gives a really great example of why Apple are so successful because they start with their why. Why do they make their products? They make the products, their, their whole marketing and their whole theory is very different than any other technology company. That's why they have been so busy, so, so successful. So you might think, well, what does that have to do with osteopathy? I'm, I'm an osteopath. I do osteopathy. But if any of you, I don't know if you have, have got this wonderful book on my very first page, I write, why did you choose to be an osteopath? And there's even on the second page, there is, it's a bit small, but there is a little section there for you to fill in why you became an osteopath. And the reason why it's first in my book is because it is really, really important. As I say in that book, those days that are tough, those days when you've either had not enough patients and you're feeling totally demoralized, you've had too many patients and you're feeling totally overwhelmed, you've had another day where nobody has got better and you feel like the worst osteopath in the world. If you remember your why, why you chose to be an osteopath, that will really help you on those days. And your why is gonna be different than my why. Is your why to do with success? You know, why, what does success mean for you in terms of an osteopath? Now I do a whole other talk on success, so I'm not gonna go into that tonight. But why, why your success for your, sorry, your why for osteopathy might be, you know, I want to be successful. And what does success mean for you? I want to have lots of money because I believe that being an osteopath doesn't mean you have to be on the bread line. I know some people have been told that, but it's absolutely not. Is it because you want to feel, feel fulfilled in your life, in your career? Is it because you want to have freedom? So you want to run your own business, you want to be your own boss. Again, what I'm trying to get you to think about is you're living intentionally in your osteopathic life. You're not just kind of going through, bumbling through, and I honestly believe you wouldn't be listening to me today and you wouldn't be watching on catch up if you didn't really want to make a difference and, and live a successful and a prosperous osteopathy life. So, because we all know, don't we, that osteopathy is not just hands-on. There is so much more to being an osteopath than just hands-on. And I almost think we need to think, of, I thought about this today, as well, well, not today, when I, was, when I was planning this talk, and it just kind of popped into my head is that it's almost as if osteopathy is a bit like a game of golf. Because you know, those, those, you may be a golfer yourself, or you may have patients or family members who are golfers. And they always say that golf is a mind game. So it's not so much about you know, how you swing or how expensive your, your club is. It's what goes on in here. And I truly believe osteopathy is like a game of golf. We have to get what's right in here first before we can be successful. And I was blessed a couple of weeks ago to do a talk to um, the final year BCom students. And um, I, in the talk that I give to them, again, I'm trying to help them start their career and not burn out like so many people are doing in our profession. And somebody asked me, um, well, why, why are osteopaths burning out? Why are, they, why are they giving up? And I think one of the reasons is this isn't in the right place. We have all kinds of limiting beliefs or negative emotions or our six human needs aren't being met properly. And that's why we're not able to move forward. So in order for us to understand our why, we need to think about what is holding you back. Is it your mindset? Is it your beliefs? Do you still have the student mindset? Now, what do I mean by the student mindset? The student mindset serves us super well when we're students. It doesn't serve us when we are fully practicing qualified osteopaths. The student mindset is, I have a goal. I need to pass my exam. I need to pass it really well. Once I've achieved that goal, I can then move on to the next thing. So I have a goal. I achieve that goal. I move on to the next thing. I have another goal. I achieve that. I move on to the next thing. Then another one comes along. I achieve that. And then I move on to the next thing. That doesn't work in practice because 
patients aren't exempt. Patients are real people, real humans, and they don't follow the textbooks, which has always been very frustrating for me in my years in practice. They don't say what they, they don't get better in the length of time that the, the NICE report says, do they? So if you have that mindset of goal achievement, move on, goal achievement, move on, that is not going to serve you and it's not going to serve your patients. If, for example, you say to yourself, right, disc injury, I've read or I know it's probably going to be about six to eight weeks to get this chat better. I'm going to tell him it's going to be six to eight weeks. You get to six weeks, he's a little bit better, but not much better. You get to seven weeks, he's still not there. He's still not right by eight weeks. What do you do? What do you say to yourself? Do you say, as we were talking about earlier, I must be a rubbish osteopath because I've not gotten better. I'm a rubbish osteopath. I'm going to refer him on to somebody else because somebody else will be able to get him better. I must just be rubbish and we spiral down and we get into that negative way of thinking. And that's your student mindset still, still driving you. Well, we need to change to a practitioner mindset and almost a more kind of thoughtful mindset. And I'm not judging anyone. If you feel that you have that mindset, I was there once, I was a student once. I, <laughs> I was told off by my first boss, my first principal, for getting rid of patients too quickly. So I've been there, I've made that mistake. Hold my hand up to that one. How do you shift to a practitioner mindset? So one way of doing it is to think more about the healing of the body and think more about that person that you have in front of you. Because you might think, I should be able to get this person better in three times. And maybe in clinic you could, maybe when at uni you could. But in real life, people don't follow the rules and they go off and they do stuff and they do crazy things and they'll do stuff that we didn't tell them to do. And so we're almost setting ourselves up for failure if we still have that student mindset. So trying to think a little bit more, a little bit wider, taking in, I don't like to use the word holistic, but looking at the whole picture rather than just, I've got to get that patient better. And also remembering it's not just up to you to get that because you are just a very, very small part of that whole healing process. So you must never feel that you're the only one that is able to get that person better. So that's moving from your mindset. So is that mindset holding you back? And leading on from that, as I was just saying, is, are your then, therefore your beliefs holding you back? So what do you believe about yourself? Do you believe you're a rubbish osteopath because you haven't got your patient better in three, se three sessions and you said you were going to? Our beliefs are very powerful. And as I, I hope you can see, I've kind of tried to link back to what I was talking about earlier, that if we are constantly focusing on, I'm not doing very well, I'm not getting my patients better, you're spiraling down into that negative, that negative focus, that lack, rather than I'm doing the best I can. I'm, I'm putting all my efforts into this patient um, and I know that this patient's gonna get better. I just need to give him a little bit more time or her a little bit more time. So your beliefs and your mindset, they may well be what's holding you back. How we do the seven levels deep exercise. This exercise, I think I did it, would have been probably the first time, probably a couple of years ago. And it aims to get to the heart of why we do what we do and our reasons behind it. And as I put it there, it, understanding our why allows us to live congruently and authentically. Oh, just spot this one say, Live authentically. So what do I mean by that? So sometimes we do things and we think we know the reasons why we do things, but in fact, they are completely different. And I've had many aha moments in, in my time doing personal development work. And this was another one of my very, very big aha moments. Um, and when I did this seven levels deep exercise, um, it might actually help if I, uh, let me stop sharing. That. And if I bring up, um, let me bring up for you the, I'm going to pop the link in the chat and then, uh, excuse my incompetence here, just bear with me while I bring it up. Right. Pop 
Yeah. Oh, what have you written, Vlad? <laughs> Excellent, yes. And that's important to them they won't be paying the whole time because when you when you say to them, you know, it's going to be 12 weeks before you get better, you kind of go, oh my goodness, is it going to take me that long? But you're absolutely right. I say you won't feel like this for that time. Um, yeah. Okay. This is the link to um, the seven levels deep. I hope you'll be able to get that one up. Um, and I, what I'll do is I will share my screen with you again and then you'll be able to see it on the screen. One up. Right, hopefully you can see that now. Oh, it's telling me it's loading. Perfect. Seven levels deep exercise. I've added osteopath because it's, I think it's important for us to view, for this session to view in terms of being an osteopath. But when I first did it, I did it in terms of what's important to you about being successful, which has a slightly different connotation, doesn't it? So you can do it as osteopath or you can do it as what's important to you about being successful. And the way that you go through this exercise is that you, you ask yourself that first question. So what's important to you about being successful? So you might say, um, what's important about being successful is to help a lot of people. So then you ask yourself that question again. So what is important to you about being a successful osteopath is to help people? Why is it important for you to help people? And then you might say, because that, that I feel like we're living a fulfilling life if I help people. Why is it important for you to feel like you're living a fulfilling life? When I first did this exercise, if I say, you just said, what's important for you about being successful? And um, I must have been going through a very materialistic phase because my idea of success was living in a big house. Um, because I thought that was that would be, if I was successful, I could live in a big house and that would mean I'd achieved a huge amount of success. So I then went through this exercise, asking myself the questions of why is it important for me to live in a big house? Because it's important for me to live in a big house, to feel successful because then I will feel, I will have achieved something if I have enough money to buy a big house. Um, and why is it important for you to achieve something? So I went through all these exercises and when you, you keep asking these questions all the way down to number seven, that's why it's called the seven of the deep exercise. When you get to number five and number six, you're kind of thinking to yourself, I'm sort of running out of things to say here. And that's your subconscious mind trying to block you from getting to the absolute truth. I'm going to put a little bit of, of um, context into here. So... As you know, I've been qualified for a long time. And in that time, I have lived through two recessions, one of which was a horrendous recession, and of course, the pandemic, and potentially another recession if we're back, if we are in a recession now. So um, I have a family, I had a small family. When, when one of the recessions hit, which was 2008, 2009, my kids were four, four five, something like that. Um, so, you know, myself and my husband, we had, uh, we had a mortgage to pay, we had, they were still at nursery, so we had childcare fees to pay, We'd, we were living not in a big house, but, you know, we had mortgage to pay, we had finance on cars, and my list was really quiet, and um, I remember thinking, you know, this is, this is really, this is really not good, you know, I, I don't feel, I don't feel like I have enough money coming in, I'm very worried about how quiet my list is, and because we're in a recession, it's not like when you just have maybe a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks where things are quiet. You know, this quietness went on for a long time. And what when I did this seven levels deep exercise, what I realized was those feelings of not having enough money, I had interpreted as if I have enough money, I will have enough money to have a big house. That will make me feel secure. So it actually wasn't the house that I wanted. It was the security that I wanted, that I believed went along with that, because in my mind, I have a big house, I can afford a big house, I can afford the mortgage, and I can afford the upkeep of the big house. So it, to me, it was like, okay, so security, financial security, 
is actually what my what my reason for being successful was. So try that exercise. It is a really it is a really good one to do. Hopefully you'll be able to download it. If you can't, let me know and I will put it in a different location for us. Um, so feel free to do that in your own time. Have a think about the uh, let me go back. Have a think about the how you are, how your mindset is helping you. If you want to share it with me, I would, I would love to to know what your your seven levels deep comes to. If it's too personal, that's absolutely fine. But but if you do this quite frequently, it can be really um, it can be really interesting to see how things change over time and how your what your why really is. So thank you, thank you for listening. Are there any questions? I stop sharing my screen and then I can come back. Did it work, everybody? Please unmute yourselves if you can. I think you can unmute yourselves. Um, are there any questions? What would you like to ask me? It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be, um, tell you what I'll do. I'll pause the recording.